Hey everybody, how's it going? So welcome back to Raygate Lake and we're now in episode 7 of Reel Up My Park from Scratch. So guys, thank you so much for coming along. I'd say this every episode, many, many times. This park wouldn't be what it is without the community and I can't thank you guys enough. So whether you're returning to watch this episode or whether you're finding us for the first time, you are all very, very welcome and I am so thankful for everything that you guys do. You blow me away with absolutely every interaction that, that you guys have and thank you all for your votes for the coaster as well i think by now from the thumbnail and the video title and everything you're probably were going to know which which coaster won but actually the votes were very much neck and neck and i think it would only be fair that i do both so both of those coasters the stand up and the slc will be appearing in this park um and so if you are new to this series, then we're building a, a, an ultra realistic park and planet coaster. We're detailing everything to the nth degree. We're abusing TMTK as much as we possibly can because there's some awesome creations out there. And as a result of those creations, we're able to get a level of realism that we couldn't get before TMTK actually existed. Things like this, for example, kitting out offices and backstage spaces with anything and everything that you could possibly imagine. So if you are new to the series, then like I say, you've got six episodes previously to catch up on. Um, and this is the, how the park is looking at the moment. So we've built turnstiles and we've built uh, ticket offices. We've built box offices. We've built guest services. This is Eurofighter over in this corner here. We've built the car parks. We've built the lake itself. The area around the lake uh, where we started to put our first rides in. And then in our last episode, this is what we were working on. This is our log flume. And uh, so at the end of this episode, I opened up a vote to what coaster is going to live in this area. And the winner for this episode is the SLC. Um, so I just need to find out how I'm going to put this into uh, into this area. And it's going to be the standard layout. It's going. It's not going to be a custom layout. It's going to be that plop and drop style S SLC because that's kind of what this park would do right it's it's a uk based theme park it's a medium budget style theme park and they they're going they would have gone through a period of time where they added rapid attractions but with as little effort as, effort as possible and so that's why i sort of wanted to put that slc in there think along the lines of blackpool pleasure beach where they sort of they bought it from somewhere somewhere else they renamed it infusion and here we go today it's one of their one of their top performing coasters but it's still an slc standard layout so that's kind of what we're going for here so in terms of uk parks um we're dealing with medium budget so we're dealing with the likes of oakwood drayton manor flamingo land elements of thorpe park in there as well but the law of the park is that over time they've become more and more and more popular and they need to make more and more effort with their rides because obviously times change markets change and everything so they need to start putting budget in so that's why we're now starting to get influences from the likes of thorpe park here in the uk um and also the likes of Hyder Park and Gardenland as well, in the, in the sense of theming and the, and the pulling together of the uh, of the actual park itself. So this is what we were building then last episode. We built the Corrals uh, uh, restaurant, the Grab and Grow rest, gra Grab and Go restaurant in Quench and Eats, the uh, actual game store down here, and the log flume. And so I'm going to answer a couple of questions actually about this log flume that that have come up because I didn't really talk about it in the last episode, and that's probably my fault. <clears throat> I should have done. So. A couple of people have said that the log flume looks quite tall. Um, so just for peace, your own peace of mind, just for reference, this log flume is the same height as Logger's Leap was at Thought Park before it shut down. So it sits the same height off the ground as Logger's Leap. The difference with this is it looks more stark because we can't do double downs. So Logger's Leap's height was almost masked by the fact that it had a double down, um, but you didn't really see it. And in terms of the actual drop itself, with it being just one singular vertical drop being quite long. Well, the drop itself is the same length as Alton Towers log flume was before it closed. So I've used both of those log flumes for reference uh, pieces, uh, the height being Logger's Leap and the length of drop being uh, Alton Towers uh, flume. So I just wanted to put that in. And in terms of queue covers and everything, so it's a UK based park. We don't have the types of summers that the likes of America would have or Australia would have. Um, our average temperature for the summer is 21 degrees Celsius. So that's around about the 70 Fahrenheit mark. And so we don't have blistering heat that often. So we don't have a need to invest in queue covers and things. Um, so what we do do, though, is we use nature instead. So we'll dapple queues and everything with shade from trees and rather than structures. 
And we do obviously ha have warm summers. We have summers that hit 35 degrees Celsius. Just for reference, it's supposed to be that in a couple of days here. Um, so we do have hot temperatures, but they don't happen frequent enough for parks to invest in cucumbers. What you may find is sometimes you'll have a building. Um, so like Shockwave at Drayton Manor, for example, the queue is hidden in a building, but that gets really stuffy and really hot, really quite uncomfortable. So, yeah, in the UK, we, don't, we tend not to have queue covers. We tend not to have physical structures. We tend to use nature and foliage to, to create that shade, that shade instead. So that's why none of our queues have got covers and none of our queues will have covers either because it's a, it's a UK based UK based park. Um, so here we go then. The SLC is going to go in this little area here. Um, and I think I'm going to have the lift hill along this side. So it's going to be your standard layout, like I say. So you were kind of a little bit torn, not torn. We're kind of stuck with what we can do with it. We're quite limited with our options. I originally wanted it to come across here. But I don't think it's going to work because I need somewhere to put the queue. So I think it's going to come along here. Anyway, I'm talking about it. I should probably just go ahead and do it really, shouldn't I? So let's cut to the first update. Let's see how this turns out, shall we? All right then, so Raygate Lake has now got itself a nice little SLC and uh, it's come together quite nicely actually. It's, it fits into the area quite well because it's long. Um, as long and thin as SLCs should be and it, on the actual skyline itself it's looking all right it's not looking too intimidating and it pokes over the trees just nicely and then from the car park itself and from the back of the uh, back of the log flume and everything you can still see it through the trees so it's still there as a point of interest quite nicely and then again from the entrance area you can sort of see it but it's not dominating as such so this is the SLC, it's, cu it's custom built, but there's a little bit of a, a planet coaster believability um, thing that we need to do, you know where we su suspend belief a little bit. As we saw with the Eurofighter, building coasters on a small compact scale is slightly difficult when you're using the, off the offset banking, um, purely because when you smooth out the track, you have to sort of overcompensate and then it gets rid of some of that banking. So. I've used the plans and everything from Limit at Hyder Park, so it's very similar in terms of scale and size and height and length and, and everything like that. But these elements here, the inversions that I've got here, they're not what I would call swoopy enough, um, but they're Planet Coaster swoopy. So it's using the, the correct off, offset and it's using smoothing and everything to make it, make it feel right. But in reality, this would look more of a heart. This would probably dip down a little bit more. But when you come and smooth along the track, you sort of end up smoothing it out to a straight section. So this is probably as hearty, if you want for a better word, as you're gonna get this inversion. And likewise with this Sidewinder, it's slightly off shape. But again, it's Planet Coaster that's doing that. It's um, you smooth this area out, and it just creates this weird, this weird effect where it sort of averages everything out. And there's no amount of me just doing just turns or just heights or just banking that would actually fix this because then it rides rough. And that's not what you want in an SLC, but it's not like the right sort of rough. So anyway. It's all quite nicely come together. We've got this lovely little gap in the middle. I don't know if I'm going to do some kind of a feature or something in the middle here. It feels like it probably should be Western themed. It needs some kind of theming element, I think. The park would probably do something like that. And then I've taken the inspiration from the queue and everything from um, Blue Tornado at Gardenland. It's just a cattle bend queue, just to the side of the actual transfer track itself. Um, nothing particularly spectacular. It's just an uninspired cattle pen queue that can hold quite a lot of people probably this queue would probably be about two hours worth of people if it were to be in real life and then we've just got the station itself um, and I wanted to perch this on the hill slightly I wanted to create some kind of different sight line so that it wasn't just a flat station I wanted it to be have a height variation between the paths here and here and then you've just got this train station the the actual station in the middle and then I've bought the exit queue, uh, the exit around the back, again, just like Blue Tornado does, actually. The difference be, uh, being that Blue Tornado actually is a straight, straight across, but because of the way that the scaling has worked in this one, we've brought this, these elements slightly down a little bit. So I'm just creating a bit of a dog leg here. And then it's going to come out to your ride photo booth and everything along this area here. And then we're going to have an open um, maintenance shed for this one. So this isn't going to be an actual building or anything. It's going to be more of a shack uh, and you're going to be able to do everything in here. And it would have space to hold the two trains once you've got the transfer track, uh, probably three actually, once you've got the transfer track itself put in here and it can transfer everything back here. And then you've just got access to the building 
that would be the maintenance area through the actual queue line itself as well. So there would be like um, temporary fences, not temporary, but removable fences along here that you could then bring uh, vans and everything into this point. You dismantle the trains in situ and then you would take it over to the maintenance areas that we built over here. So this would be one of those rides that would end up at the front of the park uh, out of season rather than it being in, in here um, and maintained like the Eurofighter would be or uh, whatever. So yeah i've just started the agile queue line theming as well so i've i've started to select the types of fences that i want in the area so i think i'm going to use the uh the same fence that we've got around the outside of the actual area itself and i've started to play with this idea of using the hedge as well just to give it that sort of bit of variation we don't want it to be too bland we do want it to be a little bit decorated but we don't want it really to be too much and then the other thing that i've added to the area is just our drop tower our roto drop tower um it felt like it needed something else in the area to draw people to it so it's now coming together as a as an actual area and then the stand-up coaster is going to come into this sort of area as well that would be probably a little bit newer than the SLC, um, or maybe the SLC might be newer actually, because the stand-up coaster would be on the outside of the park, and this would have been put in because they had space to put it there. And then eventually, what I want to do is to have the hotel on this corner. And so I'm already starting to think of the design for the hotel and the layout and everything, um, just to see how that's going to go. But I want it to be in a bit of an L shape, so the hotel would be in this this sort of area in the future, which means that then we've got this space here for the actual stand-up coaster. Um, and then this area as well, just for some other stuff, I might put some other rides or something in. Anyway, that's for another that's for another episode. We're we don't, we're focusing on the on the SLC. So, design-wise, then the station I want it to be as similar to the um, the area that we've got here, so similar style to the buildings that we've got, so that we can pull the theming all together, and similar to the actual log flume building as well, so that it, it's consistent. Um, so I kind of want it to be a bit of a house. I don't want it to be open as such. I, I, I want this one to also be closed. And so I'm going for this this kind of style. And then I might also then just bring down the um, uh, bring down another game stall just to fill in this this gap. So I just need to put all of the pathing and everything in here. Anyway, so I'm going to carry on with this SLC now that it's in place in situ, and I will see you for the next update. All right then. So we've got ourselves a bit of a maintenance area going on and. Building a, an open, clean maintenance area, I think is actually far more difficult to building a cluttered one like the Eurofighter one was. And that's purely because there's just so much stuff and so much to see in an, an enclosed building where you're putting loads of things into it. So like the Eurofighter one has things like desk space and storage space and filing cabinets and equipment to use and electric cupboards and, and everything like that. Whereas the purpose of this SLC one is this is just a really basic maintenance shed. You wouldn't do any big repairs here. You wouldn't replace wheels or restraints or even inspect the ride fully for its components in this maintenance shed. You would just use this to store it overnight when the ride's not in use. The morning inspections, the morning checks and a couple of bolt tightens and that's it the principle of the major maintenance would be that you would bring the train into this maintenance shed you deconstruct it on site a van then comes into here you load it onto the back of the van and it gets taken all the way over to the other side of the park where we've got the warehouses and that's where the big maintenance is then done and there's a couple of reasons that you do that the main one being space saving you haven't got a plan for a massive building that's going to be really obtrusive to what you're trying to achieve it's a cheaper way of doing it as well because you've already got the facilities on site you you just need the basic facility there to be able to pull a train apart and, and inspect it and make any quick repairs. So as a result, when you're building it in Planet Coaster, sometimes you toe the line between it looking bare and barren and that re realism. So I watched hours and hours and hours of SLC footage. And trust me, watching footage is so much better than writing them. <laughs> right? Um, and all of the, the ones that I saw all had these some form of clean maintenance sheds there's no clutter there was no mess massive amount so i was able to pull apart a few key features and especially the ones that we've got in our ride portfolio at work as well but i was able to pull apart some of the key features for a maintenance area that you have and this this is what i've managed to come up with so it's all open there's no side to it at all it's just enough of a rain cover to stop it from getting wet like the, the workers from getting wet if they're doing any kind of work so that's that's it it's just a shed it's nothing elaborate it's not expensive it's not a big deal but i've put the the 
realism planet coaster part into it so like you've got the bolts where the wood is meant to be meeting and then you've just got some concrete pillars and some footers just to make it seem like it's been put into the ground and it's like a solid structure but it's actually not that solid at all it could probably fall apart at any any time and then you've just got the uh the, the roof supports along here as well the ceiling supports and these are then being rested on top of the uh it's having the roof resting on top of it should i say and so that's sort of functional in the sense that you've got two beams and then that's forming a support for this beam that's on the actual roof the roof part here and it's actually quite handy that this is built into the planet coaster uh, pieces that come that come with it and then i notice with with some of these ones like this you've got these almost like lifting gears this lifting equipment that you've got all the way along the catwalk so i've just put those in now in real life you'd probably want some kind of mind your head sign but they don't exist in the game uh, purely because they are a bit of a, a, a head banging risk so you just want to uh, a sign up just to say you know mind, mind out be careful um and then you've also got along the way just step ladders but you don't have a massive away in the amount of clutter so you wouldn't have desk space you wouldn't have filing cabinets you wouldn't have any of that sort of stuff that we put into the into the euro fighter maintenance area none of that exists here it's all basic stuff so like flood lighting and emergency signage and everything else is brought on site and then taken away when it's when it's done put a couple of ropes and everything around just to give them a bit more equipment to use and then I've also just put some emergency signing around the live ride area as well so uh, you've just got in case you are maintaining the ride whilst it's in use you wouldn't be doing it whilst it's in use but if you had a train in the actual brake run or on the actual um, area itself on the transfer track itself then you've just got this line along here just to tell you where the, the live ride area is so you have to stay behind it and then you've also got um, the warning signs, the warning sirens as well that, that go off when a train is, is in motion just so that you know, just in case you, you, you know, you're not aware that the transfer track is in motion or anything, you might be standing over here not aware that there's a train that's about to be brought back in. So you've just got those uh, along here as well. I've also put the fence up along here, the appropriate signage, keep out etc you know we, we're all familiar with this this by now um, and I've just started this process of putting the queue fencing in so I, I decided that rather than using the standard metal fencing that I used over at the Eurofighter I wanted to continue the the wooden fencing in the queue and then what I'll do is I'll put some trees and everything up just to dapple some shade around just so that this isn't so stark concrete but I quite like the fact that this is just a cattle pen and you can't even see the ride from here it just feels like this is exactly what you would do when it comes to like putting in a ride as cheaply and nastily as you possibly can you just don't make the effort to have the queue snaking through the ride and everything um this is just very much a they bought it they plonk it you remember like roller coaster tycoon or blueprints for planet coaster where you just download it and plonk it and it's done that kind of feeling is is what this is supposed to be going for and so I've also then just worked on the exit path as well, which I think I need to put a janitor back. But uh, this idea of this wooden fence, this is now bringing the theme into it. Um, and so I've just wanted this this wooden fencing. Uh, it's tall. It's tall enough that you can't actually see over it, but it's got enough gaps in it that you can actually see through it. So if you wanted to be nosy, then you, then you could. And I, I like this style of fencing. And I've just varied the height of it and turned the panels around and everything just to give it the random variation that, that it's needed. But then I also wanted to continue the height of this fence until it reached the brake run over here. So I've just put the rough brick um, walls along here and then the coin, uh, the Quinn Dynasty coins on here because they create awesome like panels that, that you can use for the fences. So I've just put those on just to, to, just to top it off. Now I just need to do the actual station area itself and just to start that process obviously in here is going to be all foliage and vegetation and everything so that's all going to be good and then along here will all be foliage and vegetation as well and then bring this fence up this hill as well just to just to finish it off and then the station building is going to mimic this kind of theme and feeling that i've got over here um so it's the idea of the corrugated iron roofing and the the wood beams but i think i want solid walls and i want to make a bit of a feature of this i don't want it just to be one of these sheds that you just plonk on top of it i do want some kind of effort put into it but not a lot because it, like i say it's just supposed to be a, a, a drop a buy and drop a plop and drop uh kind of ride so that's kind of what we're going for going for here 
And I've just started to get a feel as well for how I wanted the uh, ride photo area. And I kind of figured that this, this ride with its open maintenance area would also need some kind of electrical cupboard or cabinet area so this is where all the electrics would be so you wouldn't have them in the exposed elements over here you would definitely need to have them but you hide them away in a building somewhere so i kind of figured that one part of the shop that you're going to be using here to box off this area here would also be used as the electric electric station if you like but you wouldn't have much in here it would just be the cabinets and that would be it job done and then all along the catwalks, I've just put the electric ca cabinets in as well. And again, unlike the Eurofighter that uses all of those motion sensors and it gives it that like, like variation all along the catwalk and it gives something nice to see in Planet Coaster, you don't have that on SLCs. They are just clear catwalks. So I've just put the um, electric cabinets all along, all along here. And I've also run the cables uh, just underneath the, uh, the catwalk as well, just so, just so that's got that element of realism in there as well. Um, and then I've also on the actual transfer track itself. I, I did some research into how these how these work, and you have this like electric cabling that runs along the top. And so the idea is that the transfer track would move from this position to this position, and then when these electric cables are then connected, it then fires up the electricity for that whole transfer track, and that's when you can then start to uh, move your trains back and you do it through the drive tires and everything. You can still do it manually if you're working on something in this area, but you don't have necessarily have the electricity in this area. So that's what I've started to do here is I've started this process of bringing in the runners all along the all along the bottom of the beams and the electric cables at the top just so that the transfer track can then move along quite nicely, quite helpfully and clean in a clean motion. And then I've just made sure that I've bought all of the um, the electric cables down the pillars and then you've just got one central electric station that everything would be connected to so if you think that this would come up along here along the top and then along the side here so that's the maintenance area as it's as it's sitting at the moment so my next bit as i said is now just dealing with the station and starting to get a feel for how it's going to look on this side of the path how it's going to look when you're walking towards it and then start the process of the inside where we start dealing with the uh the decoration and, and foliage and everything that, that I want to do. So as the auto save, save kicks in, that's really good timing. I will see you for the next update. All right then, so quite a lot to update you on this one. And you can see there's been quite a lot of progress that's been made all over the entire site. So you can see then that we've got a station building that's coming together quite nicely. We've got something to talk about over here on the right hand side. And now we've just got some more detailing going on on the drop tower as well. So this is the process of starting to bring the entire area together and make it a bit more consistent with what we've already built in in the previous episode so over at the drop tower then i've started to put all of the fencing in around the drop tower and this ride in game isn't much of a crowd draw anyway so i don't want to waste precious time detailing this too much when there isn't really much point it doesn't attract that many guests so this would be real life in a park as well. You've got so many other decent attractions that you'd have elsewhere that you wouldn't really put much effort into this area. You would just sort of put a few fences up, maybe throw a few flowers around, a bit of mulch, a bit of paving, done, job done. So this ride is pretty much how I want it to be. I've just put, I've put the concrete padding down on the path. I've just used the same queue line fences as everywhere else. I've changed up the queue line fence around the actual ride itself just to give it a little bit of sightline variation. But again, no, no real detailing. There's going to be no buildings, no shops, no nothing that, that needs to be around this because it's just, it's just there. It's a filler ride and it's going to be treated like a filler ride by the park. But what I have done along here is just starting the detailing work to make sure that this brick line or this brick pathing uh, line is consistent across here and that it also matches along the, um, the actual per perimeter of this ride as well. So I wanted just to make sure that the bricks would match the concrete and then I just put the mulch in just to hide where the bricks would technically overlap in here. So that's just creating that nice clean, nice clean line. And then over at the ride station I've started to do exactly the same again so the mulch is just along the perimeter just to hide the fact that the bricks are overshooting the pathway and then i just got a curbstone in there just to make it sort of capped off if you like think of again it's that that principle of cartoon black outlines that you use it's just creating a, a barrier a, a definite end to that pathway that makes the this whole thing make sense then so you've got the mulch and then you've got the bricks 
and again just put the fences all along the, the side here finished off the queue line fencing and I now just need to finish off the padding but I just wanted to show you how this is all coming together underneath and, and how this is all sort of lined off by that same firehouse uh, windowsill and then it'll just have the padding along here just to hide the gaps in the in the queue line and it creates this concrete pad as you've already seen right the way everywhere and then you've also got the same principle here of the brickwork um, I need to find a solution for these two pieces here because the brickwork overshoots the hedges so I don't know if I'm going to be able to find something that I can hide it with maybe a sign or a bin which I've tried here so I need to find something to do with to do with this because I don't really want to take it off grid because then the patterns don't match up and it looks a bit silly so I need to find something later on but that's that's later on's problem that's not a now problem the now problem was the station so I started to bring together again this idea of really cheap really simple but really detailed station and so I've taken cues again from other SLCs that I know that we've got in the, the work portfolio and I noticed that in game the stations don't have supports for the track and I don't know if that's intended or not and I don't know why but yeah you would need some kind of a support in the station for this track it doesn't just float so that's what I've done I've just bought this idea of the supports in and I've continued the color and I've continued the same shaping and everything that we have elsewhere so it's it's nice it's nice and consistent but then I've started to hide it very much with all of the wood effect and everything in here as well. So the station, I think in terms of decoration, is pretty much how I want it. I've used the haunted house beams to create the walls. Uh, so I, I wanted this one to be a solid, a solid wall, a little bit like we've got over at the log flume. And then I wanted over here to have almost like a paneling effect. So what I've done is I've used the, the shortest of the haunted house pillars, uh, not pillars, sorry, the haunted house beams, planks, that we've got along here and then I've used the same but I've turned them on the other side and they're at a slight angle to make it look like it's a bit of a hatching effect and then it goes up in a straight line and actually this works really 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 nicely because what you can then do is use a beams beams you can use the beams to create your windows and then you cr you make the beams thick enough that it then hides all of the joints and hides, hides all of the nasty bits of this paneling that you've put together and it actually then comes together and it looks like one nice big piece of wall and then you I've just used the haunted house beams along here as well just to hide some of the gaps and hide some of the joins and, and everything and it's actually turned out really 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 quite nicely you can see into the station through the window and I checked out some real life imagery of this kind of paneling where windows are involved because I was a little bit concerned about having this gap here but actually this happens so we tend to find it on garden sheds believe it like that was my reference image was a garden shed that's got a window and I saw that actually this is quite common so I've left it there because it looks authentic it looks like it should do now I've just continued um, this fencing all along the queue line here and you seem to be sticking outside of a side of the wall just don't look he's not there it's fine you can't see him um, and then I've just continued this all along here and now I wanted this side to actually be open I need to tidy this up obviously this is not it's this is not how I want it to stay um, but I wanted this side to be open because the train comes hurtling past this side so it feels like it feels like that should be open it feels like that should be a bit of a feature and so I've kept this side of the actual station itself open so I now just need to put the roof on and I just need to tidy up this side of the station itself so it will then be pretty much done bit of detailing few safety signage and I need to decide if I'm going to do some kind of an operator's booth in here as well so that'll be the next bit but the big thing to talk about is the gift shop so it's decided to be a gift shop it was originally just going to be a ride photo area nothing particularly special nothing particularly big but then I, when I did a bit of a holistic view of the entire area where I wanted other stuff to go like the roller coaster everything that's going to be around here I kind of realized that there would be a natural path that would come down this way and you'd need some kind of a gift shop and some kind of restauranty type area in here now the restaurant's not going to be this episode it's, I need to see how that's going to go but it felt like there would be an actual gift shop here and to bring the whole western theme together it would be a big western building 
Then we've also got the railway that's coming down this way and it feels like this would be a natural place to have the second station and having it sort of semi-western themed or at least using the original building that we've got over here which is kind of western infused kind of felt like that would be a bit natural so I'm starting that process for future episodes now and what I came up with is this I wanted it to be a bit blocky a bit bulky but a bit varied in its actual size and shape so I've used a couple of um, pitched roofs just to break up the starkness of the of the actual walls and then I've also used some flat roof along here as well just so it's not so obtrusive on the actual environment itself and then I've just decorated it around using exactly the same principles that we've had for the autosave uh, had the same principles as we did before so I've copied all of the stuff that's come through from this the station over on the uh, the other side just to make sure that it's consistent in design and just to make sure that everything is, is as it should be um so you've got the stone you've got the panels you've got the the hatching work and then i just started this process of putting the balcony up at the top here and the balcony is essentially the haunted beams and then beams and tmtk beams just to create the slats because we don't have anything that's thin enough and short enough to create that kind of hatching and i didn't want to use the in-game railings the western railings i mean th those are really really good i love them to pieces and i've overused them in many many parks before but they were too tall for what i wanted in this area so this is not a full four meter height this is only a three meter height and then i've just pulled together some windows as well just to break up the actual wall space itself and the windows are the one-way glass that you find on tmtk and also uh, just some more beams uh, of, diff of varying different widths so that it just creates that that idea of the window and i started just to do the porch awning that's coming down this side so this will be all supported off and, and wood uh, topped off and everything and then I'll need to find some sort of solution to do some kind of panelling at the bottom just to bring it all to life and then I can't show you it really at the moment because whilst we're doing the auto save as you can see the game just stops and that's it then it's it's a good couple of minutes that we're out for but you can see in the background here that th this is a slightly different panel so what I've done here is I've used the barn stable door and turned it the other way so you've got the back end of that door and it creates this awesome there we go it creates this awesome like wood panel effect that's different to this wood panel effect and it creates this nice little variance it's actually it's actually quite nice and then I've just pulled together this idea of a gift shop so I'm, I'm pulling cues from the other gift shop in the sense that you're going to have this area that would be shirts and stuff and then you've just got this area around here just makes this whole shop usable makes it make sense so there's a couple of grabber machines there's a couple of bending machines and then obviously in the middle I'm going to put all of the um, shelves and the stock and, and everything that, that comes that comes with the gift shop and then I'm, I'm going to make this a flat roof on the inside so it's going to be a wooden flat roof partly because I need a strategy to hide the things that are going to poke through when I do some of the out outside external detailing so that's going to be the, the strategy here and then I just need to tidy up the everything else and then do the ride photo booth as, as well so it's all coming together nicely um, I like how this is going to sit on the landscape it's sort of out of the way but it's not out of the way and it's also borrowing quite a few cues from here as well from the corrals and the, and the quench and eats again it's that paneling effect that's sitting up on here and the pitch trues and everything so it's it's calling its cues quite nicely from where, where i want it where i want it to go so i'm going to carry on and there'll probably be one more penultimate update before the last update because i think this this is sort of taking shape i wasn't planning on doing any of this but I think this now lends itself quite nicely to a mid-season a mid update. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'll see you for the next one. All right, it's time for a real quick update before we have a look at the final thing. And I've made quite a few changes around the area themselves. I've been doing quite a lot of work, particularly around the gift shop. So I'll show you around that in a moment. But before I do, we're going to start in the station here. And there's some changes that I've made. And I've realised that I haven't really talked about the operation of this SLC. So SLCs themselves are actually really quite easy to operate. You tend to have four operators, uh, one for each corner of the ride and then this back operator is responsible for the first batch of rows and then the front operator for the next batch the next batch of rows typically depending on the rows if you've got eight rows for example he would be responsible for four he'd be responsible for 
four, and then these two ladies at the front would be responsible for the front four uh, rows. And so it's not really much of a different setup. You know, you see some of the B&Ms that have got six staff. This is only a this is only a four. And then you have your one main ride operator as well. This lady here would be the one that's in charge of actually dispatching the train. So you're probably familiar with all of that by now, anyway. Uh, exit and entrance strategy then so it's enter one side exit on the other pretty typical of a roller coaster and uh, this is what I've started to do actually I've started to put some of the signage and everything up just to say it's exit this way leave this way please and I've tidied up this fence it's now sitting in the position that I actually wanted to sit it's now a lot more comfortable and you now get this real nice view of this hideous coaster I love how ugly and awful SLCs are, but you can still make them look all right. So this fence and the signs and everything, this is now starting to come together as a, as a view, as a view quite nicely. And then I've, oops, I've done a ride operator booth as well. It's nothing fancy. Uh, again, I didn't want to put too much effort into this area because the park is just literally throwing a coaster at it, just for its coaster count. So it's least amount of money for the biggest impact they can possibly afford. So the actual ride operator booth itself is, is relatively simple. It's just panelled wood and just hiding off the the in game the in game one. So, but then on the outside, there's been some changes that have been made. So I've now finished off all of the queue line path along here. It's now got all of its concrete padding and it's now hiding all of the ugly gaps. And I've decided that the mulch that I drove has put onto the TMTK uh, workshop is now my new favourite thing. Beams and mulch are the absolute saviour of this park because this mulch is just so versatile and tactile because it comes in so many different sizes that you can do all sorts with it. I mean, look, it's it's seamless across the curbing and it's hiding this path overlap and, and it actually looks good. It looks like someone's just thrown down some bark just to stop the weeds and stuff coming through. So I'm going to put some plants and everything on here and it's going to finish it off quite nicely. So this is really, really lovely. And you're going to see that in full effect in, in a moment up by the gift shop as well um, and again down here so it's this same principle I've just put a couple of fences and whatever in I've copied across the game stall so I wanted it to be the exact same game stall but I'm going to make it a different game so it's going to be a ring toss and uh, I've just put some signage and everything in for the final update and everything in there so but the, the actual unit itself is identical um, and that's what would happen in this area it would be a cookie cutter they would just say I want this in two places and they, that's what they built there's no real variation and then over here, uh, I posted this picture actually before I did a lot of this work on Facebook. So in case anybody was in case anybody was wondering, I did clean up this area. It was horrific. Um, so I've just tidied up the fences. I've just put a couple of gates in to make it actually obvious that it's a service road and it's not really um, accessible to, to the guests and to the public. Uh, so I've just made that obvious. And then again, I've just tidied up the the curbing and used the mulch to hide all of the overlaps of path i mean this is i think there's three overlaps path overlaps here you've got the wood in the shop you've got this uh, brick that's from the vintage pack and then you've got this concrete the firehouse and it's all overlapping everywhere and the mulch just absolutely beautifully hides it so once we get some vegetation and everything in there that's going to look good and again the brick is hiding all sorts of manner of path hell going on underneath here all sorts of horrific things that are going on some like insulting looking paths and then just one flower bed just to sort of make it break up at the, the actual area itself and then the mulch once again is hiding this horrific crime that I'm, that I'm making with the bath covers uh, so the actual gold mine gifts shop is now pretty much finished it needs its fine details I need you just to do one final pass with uh, the whole TMTK element in here, but I'm now happy with how this is looking. So we have a roof and uh, we have some aircon units and everything on, on the top. This is pretty much all you would have on the roof here. This this isn't a building that requires a lot of service things, service and maintenance stuff. Um, it's just an aircon unit and that's pretty much going to be it. The electric cupboard is still there in the back. So there's our electric cupboard, which is the electricity main points for the actual coaster itself. And then I've just used all of the wood and everything that we used over on the uh, log flume just to keep that consistent theming going along. So it's it's obvious that the two the two areas are supposed to be tied together and the balcony and everything is now all coming together quite nicely. And it sits well on the on the landscape 
now so this is looking good and then inside is now pretty much fully decorated like I say oh come on uh, we just need to uh, sort out the actual fine details there's a few TMTK things that I just need to go in here but it's looking very cluttered it's looking very gift shop is looking very bright it's looking very garish and this is exactly as I wanted it so it's this idea that they try to modern up this western theme and it's using actually the same sort of theming ideas that we used in the gift shop at the very front of the park so it's dragging that overall park theme into a western area so if you remember back to some of the Real Up My Ride episodes where I talk about parks having, having to have an overall overarching theme, this is one of those opportunities for us to actually do it. The fonts for the stuff on the walls is all the same and the colours are all the same and the gift shops are roughly laid out in the same sort of layout. It's just bringing that consistency across. Um, and no, in case you're wondering, I haven't just copied and pasted the shelves. They are bespoke filled and it takes ages and I hate doing it, but it's totally worth it. I could just save these as blueprints and plop them in, but I think I like the, the idea of, of the variation, even though it takes forever to do. Um, and then over in the photos area, I've just, again, kitted it out with some stuff. Um, I need to put the monitors in the front here. I haven't, I haven't done that yet. Um, I just wanted to make sure I had everything else in place first, especially as I didn't, because this is an odd layout, I didn't know how the layout was going to work in terms of this L shape, so the idea is you get your photos along this side here and then you pay for gifts and stuff here, and we've got the, the printers, we've got the clutter on the back, and we've just got uh, filled out with the uh, filing cabinets and then the shelving underneath the, the actual desks and, and everything itself, and then the path comes out this way and I've just used the, the concrete and then it also from this side just looks like a complete building so you just walk in and there it is there's your photos on the right hand side and then you exit via the gift shop like this there we go so that's pretty much how it's sitting before I start doing uh, start doing the final final update the only rather real area that I've not so much shown you it's all been focused down this this side here is at the top here I've just started as the auto safe kicks in uh, I've just started the process of the fences all along here just to give it that consistent feel and I've started to bring the railway around how I want it to as well so the railway now wraps around the coaster so the next thing to do for this part uh, is to start the process of the terrain and the uh, foliage that I want in this area the bins the benches the signs all of that sort of stuff is now time to, to finish it off. This is the bit then where it actually all comes to life. So, without further ado, let's see how that turns out. All right, so we've got ourselves an SLC and we've called it Gold Rush. And you've probably already worked that out because it was on the side of the gift shop in one of the previous updates. But it's here. And SLCs, as we already know, they're rough coasters, parked by them and plonk them in wherever they possibly can because it just adds to their coaster lineup. They're just off the shelf throw a bit of theming around it and everybody's happy guests love it and you get to 17 years down the line and the coaster's still operating in the park and it's just rough as anything and this is kind of now feeling like that kind of setup so the park has sort of plonked this coaster right where it is and that's where it stayed and the guests are still riding it so they just can't be bothered to get rid of it and when you're actually detailing stuff like this even though we're going for this light theme light touch never underestimate how long it's going to take to detail something even the generic stuff takes ages to detail because it's all of those fine little things that you need it's all about the cables that you would lay and the transfer track mechanisms and the um, fences on the actual queue line path and the signs and the foliage and, and everything so even though this is a relatively simple build this is still taken quite a while to pull pull together so this is the area anyway even though it's a generic layout it's it's you know typical slc it's got a bit of foliage around it just to give a few head choppers and feet choppers and the terrain is really close on this first drop i really wanted to get this this first drop to be like proper exciting especially as it's an slc does it show that i really don't like slc's by the way i hope it doesn't um yeah there we go here it comes so yes that foot chopper effect and it clears it by quite a bit actually it clears it by well beyond this the safety uh, envelope that you'd allow and then I also reprofiled this brake run so when I looked back at the documents for some of the SLCs in our portfolio 
I noticed actually that the brake runs are an incline and this one here I'd, I'd built according to how they are in real life but it just didn't feel right it felt a bit roller coaster tycoon -y. so all I've done is I've just reprofiled it and it's now on a constant solid slant down speed on an incline down rather than it flattening out around the corner and then back down again and it actually looks a little bit better on the on the portfolio on the profile side should I say portfolio on the profile side so yeah maintenance shed then is looking really lovely it's uh, nice and enclosed it's now very much simple and remember the idea of the maintenance shed is it's supposed to be clean it's supposed to be clear I was a little bit worried that this was going to be a little bit too cluttered for the sight line that we were working with but actually it works out quite nicely it's uh, it's exactly as as I thought this would actually work out and it's, it's pretty much representative of the other ones that I've seen in real life too so this has come across nicely and then on the sight line from the queue line and everything I mean it's just hideous isn't it but it's supposed to be this is exactly how it's supposed to be hideous and bland and just there um, so I've also put the foliage and everything around the outside of the ride so just to dapple some shade and everything I did toy with the idea of putting some trees and everything in the middle of the cattle pen but no this is supposed to be depressing so it's filling that filling that gap quite nicely <laughs> and then uh, this this view here I really like this view actually it's come together really really well it, it, this looks like everything just fits it just it just is so you've got like the queue line path along here where it's there's no gap it's just a solid concrete path and you've got the fencing along the side here then you've got the curb then you've got the uh, fence along here then you've got the clutter in front of it you've got the foliage just dappling it through a couple of trees the ride sign it just it just looks good on the sight line I, I'm quite I'm quite enjoying this this how it looks like the queue isn't straight it's away from the cattle pen it sort of meanders its way into the station you can see right down into the brake run but you can see the techniques of the actual coaster itself um, and then from this sight line as well so close to the actual ride queue sign I like that you can see pretty much the key points of the roller coaster tipping over the top of the actual station itself so even though we are designing this to be as bland and as horrific and uninspiring as we possibly can there still has to be an element of inspiration put into what we're doing and what we're designing and this is coming across quite nicely so we've got a train that's just coming now and you can now see that you can see all of the elements you can see the inversions you can see the, the, these, these exciting points of the ride and I quite like there we go I quite like how this is swooping around the actual track itself and it's close enough to the entrance as well that you can just go yep I'm gonna go on and go on a ride and then I'm going to be invited into this cattle pen I've then also around this way just put a ring toss as I said in um, not really much detail needed on this one it's quite nice and simple you just put some pegs in you put some rope around uh, and then just some clutter for the, the actual gifts and everything that you'd put on here and then a ride sign a ringo wingo uh, and then I've just put some more benches and everything around the area just to break up the fact that it's a very big um, plaza area and then carried on the brick as well just to make sure that that's still consistent through the area this is pretty much where the stand-up coast is going to be so uh, I've left this area just sort of unkempt at the moment I don't know what my strategy is for this part of the path this bits needed to hide the, the brick shame that I've got so I don't know how I'm going to incorporate that yet that will come at a later time the drop tower is sitting quite nicely now I like how this is sort of perched at the end of this sight line where you've got all of the shops and then there's the, the drop tower and when you look through the drop tower into the queue behind it's exactly as this park would, would have it it's an out and back queue it goes into a cattle pen you the park will probably be able to change what cattle pens are in use based on how busy the ride is and then it's just really easily accessible from everything and imagine obviously you've got stuff going on in the background that obscures the view of the car park and the grass and, and everything this is actually quite a nice little quite a nice little ride and if you imagine as well you're going to have another coaster that's along, alongside here it sits quite nicely it feels like it fits there that's that's its actual home and so then we come into the station of the actual of the SLC and I've just done the the final tweaks so the baggage handling and the signs uh, I think the staff were already in right now because we were talking about how we actually operate it so not really much has changed in here just 
sort of done the final touches, the safety signs and everything just to, just along here. Please don't walk through my ride operator. Um, and then just the bins and everything just to finish finish the station up. And then same with this run. Um, I've just put the bins in, make it there. And then the ride photo booth uh, or the ride photo camera, should I say, is even there. And then we come down to the actual gift shop itself. So the gold mine gifts, put all of the foliage and everything um, in here. And I put in just some real loose Western theme. It's just literally thrown at the thrown at the shop just to make it look like it's Western. But actually, like I say, this mulch really does save everything. It just brings everything to life and everything together. And I, I just like how this now sits. Like it's just bark that's been thrown down just to keep it looking tidy. But underneath, this is probably a real mess of weeds and all sorts going on. And then we come into the gift shop. So nothing really has changed. I've just put a couple of bins. Uh, the staff are now in for the photo booth uh, and then the, the actual ride photos are all in. Other than that, this was pretty much done anyway. I quite like how this was how this was looking. And then I've just done the uh, decoration around the actual uh, area of the back end of the, the SLC. So I've just put all of the fencing in, put, I've brought the railway around. Obviously, I, this is going to be a, a crossing. I need to sort out the height and everything of, of, the, of the track but uh, yeah this is pretty much where it's going to go and I think there might actually be the station here I think I've, I'm sort of selling myself on this idea of, of, of the station being there and so this is the general overview of the area as, as our famous autosave kicks in I'm definitely going to have a, an investigate to see whether I can change the length of the autosaves but this is the area that we're now dealing with then so this is the SLC um, we know that the stand-up coaster is going to go in this corner over here and that will then finish off this area quite nicely, ready for steam release. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, really hope you've enjoyed this one. SLCs are hideous, disgusting coasters. And this has turned out quite nice, actually. So if you like what you see, please obviously uh, leave a like. Subscribe to the channel so you get notified of new of new episodes love having you guys along as you already know always say this and i say it many times in an episode and i genuinely mean it can't do these episodes without the community it's only as good as the community and the feedback that you give so thank you so much for coming along for the ride i will see you all in the very near future um keep yourself safe if you are uh out and about and i think we should probably take a ride on the world's smoothest slc so i'll leave you with a pov so here we go. Take care. Bye-bye.